Tanaka Watch continues. I'm Pete McCarthy talking right now with Alden Gonzalez, Angels reporter for MLB.com, as we speculate where Tanaka could end up. And Alden, what are you hearing about the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim? Do you expect them to become one of the primary bidders for Tanaka's services? Yeah, Pete. I mean, they like Masahiro Tanaka. They have money left in their budget, and they have a need for starting pitching, particularly high upside starting pitching, younger guys because they don't have much coming up in their farm system. So, I mean, you could look at the Angels roster and you could really easily find a fit there. The problem with the Angels, though, is the luxury tax concerns. They have about roughly $15 million left before hitting that $189 million threshold. So if Tanaka's price really goes up to the six-year, $100 million range, this deal really can't happen unless uh, owner Artie Moreno approves of going over the luxury tax. Phillies, Red Sox, Yankees, Dodgers, those are the only teams that have ever gone over that tax. Artie Moreno, like many owners, has been against going over that tax in the past. And, you know, the thing about Tanaka, too, I mean, a lot of people rave about him for obvious reasons. He's got great stuff. But, you know, like with any of these Japanese free agents, there's a lot of unknowns there. How is he going to transition to the United States? Um, what about the workload? He's, still, he's averaged over 113 pitches the last five years. That's a lot for a guy who's only 25 years old. So as intriguing as that guy is, there's a lot of unknowns. It'd be really tough for the Angels to commit over $100 million like it would for any other team. And, you know, that new posting system is going to make it really tough for them. Under the old system, you could bid a lot for the posting fee. It doesn't count against the luxury tax. And then the average annual value of his contract is a lot lower, like you saw with Hugh Darvish. He signed for six years and $56 million. Now, with a maximum fee of only $20 million, that contract's going to be a lot higher. It's really going to hurt the Angels against the luxury tax. A lot of teams are going to be involved, and it's going to be really, really tough for the Angels to get them. The luxury tax obviously important, but even if we put that aside, it's going to take a long-term high financial commitment in order to land Tanaka, considering the Angels already have some long-term big-money contracts on the books. Would they be concerned about adding another? Yeah, that's the thing, too, Pete. I mean, that, that's another issue brought up with, by some in the organization. At some point, At some point, you have to stop handing out these large contracts. I mean, the Angels have money, and they've shown that they're willing to spend in order to try to compete, but, I mean... You, you can't just keep going. You know, they don't have limitless funds like the Dodgers and Yankees have shown. They have Albert Pools making an average annual value of $25, $24 million for eight more years. Josh Hamilton at $25 million a year for four more seasons. Weaver and C.J. Wilson also have big contracts for three more years. And then one thing that the Angels have to be conscious of, and they are, is Mike Trout. In one year, Mike Trout is probably going to set a record for a first-year arbitration eligible player. They'd like to sign him to an extension. That's going to be really expensive for a guy that many already consider the best player in baseball at 22 years old. That has to factor into it as well. So, I mean, that, that's why it'd just be really tough. No matter how much they need pitching, um, it'd be tough to see them go nine figures on a deal for Tanaka. And, and I think the big thing about where the Angels are at right now, too, Pete, is the trade – the Mark Trumbo trade that brought them back two young, controllable lefties in Tyler Skaggs and Hector Santiago put them in a position where they don't feel like they have to have starting pitching. They want to add another free agent starter. They have the money to do it. But my, my indication so far are that they're not willing to really grossly overpay for it uh, because they feel like if prices don't come down in January from the other free agents, which normally they do, then... They'll go into the season with a rotation of Weaver, C.J. Wilson, Garrett Richards, Tyler Skaggs, and Hector Santiago, and they're okay with that. They'd like to add somebody else, but they're not going to go above their means to do it. That's my indication so far. Well, considering that some of the teams that are rumored to be involved are division rivals of the Angels or geographic rivals of the Angels like the Los Angeles Dodgers, could that become a factor in forcing their hand? I don't think it will, but you never know. With Artie Moreno, he's a very competitive guy. You saw it with the Josh Hamilton signing. You saw it with the Albert Pools signing. I don't think it'd be very prudent to um, really um, have other teams influence your decisions in terms of uh, geographically or whether even if they're in the, within the same division. I think the Angels got to do what's best for them. But you never know. I mean, they're trying to win a championship now, and their window is closing. 